What's that? Hey, I'm, I'm not in the chair yet. <laughs> Dan, you all, you all ready? Yep. Okay, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the Town of Delafield Board of Supervisors meeting for Tuesday, September 14th, 2021. If you would rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Wolfley. Present. Michaels. Here. Chairman Troy. Present. Thank you. Citizens' comments. Uh, public comments from citizens regarding items that are on or not on the agenda. The board may not engage in the discussion with the citizens making the comment. Individual presentations are limited to three minutes and citizens shall follow the rules as set forth in section 2.04 sub 1 sub D of the town code. Is there anyone who'd like to speak on anything that's either on or not on the agenda? Yes, sir. If you'd come to the podium and introduce yourself. I'm Dave Betcher. I live on Highway C next to the fire station, and I brought with us a, a petition to oppose the deer hunting at the fire station. I'll present that to Dan. And in it's a cover letter. On July 15, 2021, a meeting commenced at the Town Hall of Delafield between myself, who I own all the property on the north side of the fire station, and Dan Sedlock, who's president of the Evergreen Homeowners Association, Gary Mitchell, who's vice president of the Homeowners Association, and Jeff Engel, who's a resident. Uh, from the town was Ron Troy, Dan Green, and two members of the TOD Deer Management Program. In this meeting, it was decided that the Town of Delafield Deer Management Team would erect a sign in the parking lot at the fire station stipulating the specific requirements necessary to hunt on the property. Also, they agreed to install the deer stand over 300 feet from my building and Jeff Engel's home. The stand will face west and be shrouded so only arrows shot to the west are possible. Also, the site will, be open to, will not be open to the public for scheduled hunters that randomly sign up at the TOD website. We believe these are temporary fix to a dangerous situation that is waiting for a possible catastrophic event. The geography is such that a deer shot from the stand will almost certainly leave the property. It's only 107 yards wide. A deer will normally run up to 400 yards when it's hit with an arrow. Last year, the Evergreen residents, as well as myself, experienced dead deer on our residences that no one claimed that were likely wounded at the fire station. Arrows have been retrieved outside the fire station property, which indicates the equipment they use is easily case capable of damage on other properties. Currently, no on-site policing exists to ensure exactly who is hunting there. The petition we are submitting has over 60 signatures from all the residents surrounding the fire station property and many more radiating to the properties beyond. These signatures represent the will of the people af affected by this dangerous situation. <clears throat> it asks the board to stop the hunting on this site and prohibit future hunting at this populated site and instead focus its efforts on re removing deer from the same herd in other locations, including the former Ethan Allen School for Boy property just over the hill from where the fire station is. We all understand the need to reduce the deer population in the town of Delafield, but first and foremost, should be considered the health and safety of the people in the surrounding neighborhoods. The site is simply too small and too populated to meet the most important consideration. Please make note of the signatures and the location these signatures represent on the maps we attached. So, Excuse me, wait. sir, your three minutes are well over. We appreciate oh. your comments. Okay, fine. Thank you. 
Anybody else care to speak? Yes. My name is Dan Sudlock. My wife and I have lived in the town, especially uh, specifically in Evergreen subdivision for 32 years. Uh, I am the president of our homeowners association and board member. Per our petition, which we've laid out, uh, we are asking the town to uh, stop the deer hunting in that area. Let me be clear, I am an avid deer hunter myself. I've hunted deer for 60 years. And I do respect the changes that Wayne Dean and his group has made trying to make it safer. But I also know with those 60 years, accidents happen. And they can be called accidents, I call them stupids. But when you have a lethal weapon in your hand, an awful lot of things can happen. We have found arrows not only in the fire station property, we found them on Jeff Ingalls property, we found them on Dave's property, and we found them in the park. And if you know anything about bow hunting, those are razor blades that are laying there. If one of our children steps on them in our park is my biggest concern. We have signatures from 22 of the 23 residents in our subdivision. And we have a 15 acre park. I'm not sure if anyone is much aware of it other than knowing that it's there. But we're having younger families move into our subdivision and everyone's using a park. In fact, our meeting, we tried to, we are going to put in swing sets, slides, the whole nine yards again. That park abuts the deer stand. And my calculations are they're about 55 yards from the border of the park to the deer stand. When the parents go down, they let the kids run. They take their dogs with them and they let them run. And they have a great day. They have picnics in the park. And I can't see for the life of me that it's worth having someone with a lethal weapon next to a park with kids running around. I don't even understand it. I know the reason, I absolutely know the reason, and it, realistically as a hunter, I agree with the reason. But there's a better way to do it, and that 107 yard wide by approximately 175 yard long little nook, which is explained very well on that map that we've drawn up, uh, doesn't make any sense to, to me as a hunter. Uh, so we object to it. The uh, petition has uh, been uh, given to Dan, and the maps have been given to Dan. And we would appreciate your thought and consideration in this matter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Dan, would you make sure you send out the maps and the petition to the board members? Anybody else care to speak on this topic? Mr. Dean. And again, you have three minutes, Mr. Dean. Wayne Dean, 3479 Broken Bow Trail in Delafield. <clears throat> I have a petition also signed by 120 people. Whereas the overpopulation of deer in the Delafield and Waukesha area contributes to a significant destruction of vegetation, whereas Lantham Peak in the Delafield area is the epicenter of chronic waste disease in the county, according to the DNR, whereas Waukesha County ranks highest amongst the number of deer vehicle collisions with nearly 900 per year. And whereas the overpopulation of deer contributes to Lyme's disease spread through deer ticks, and whereas bow hunting, especially from an elevated stand, shooting toward the ground, is an extremely safe activity resulting in no statewide injuries in 2020. Therefore, for public safety and health of Delafield residents, we support an aggressive deer management program throughout the area. There's 120 signatures on this petition. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anybody care to speak on any topic that's either on or not on the agenda? Okay, then we'll close the public uh, citizen comment section and move on to approval of the minutes of the August 24th, 2021 meeting. Any corrections? 
I move to approve the uh, Town of Delafield Board of Supervisors meeting August 24, 2021 uh, minutes as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> Action on vouchers submitted for payment. There are no budget amendments, so we'll move to accounts payable and payroll. And you guys don't have those numbers because I didn't provide them to you. <laughs> I'll get those to you in one second. Sorry about Here, that. I, did. I was going to say, thank you. Uh, motion to approve uh, checks number 64985 through 65015 in the amount of $51,703.68. Second. And uh, approval of uh, payrolls. I was say. <laughs> Go ahead. Dated uh, September 17th. Uh, for thirteen thousand two hundred eighty-eight dollars and seven cents. Okay, now I second it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the check register from September seventeenth is check numbers six four nine seven one and six four nine seven four through six four nine seven eight, uh, and checks number six four nine eight zero and six four nine eight four through six five zero one five in the amount of sixty-eight thousand seven hundred and seventeen dollars and one cent. Correct. Uh, I missed the page. I see that. Thank you. Nope. No problem. And then you got the payroll fine. So. So with that, um, a, a change. I. You amend your motion. I, I amend my motion. Yeah. I'll still second it. That's right. We have a motion, a amended motion, and a second to the amendment motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Amended motion passes. I'll forward those out to all the board members. Sorry, I was working on the budget. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you, you were pretty busy with the budget the last two weeks. Um, item seven, communications for discussion and possible action. I'm not sure there's much to talk about, but Mr. Green, you want to cover all of them? Sure. Uh, waste hauler services, we already talked about it during the budget meeting. Um, right now we're just waiting on those responses from RFPs. We have a couple meetings in um, early and mid-October where we'll discuss and rank those that come in and then discuss you know, prices and things like that. I, one quick one on that. So I guess the prior to this, like we had zero communication from waste management. Like we weren't getting any response. And so you said you did get some response from this Ryan whatever yeah, Ryan, last name. Ryan's are more our rep for day to day you know if somebody misses um, like a pickup then we contact him for you know single pickups or a couple people that missed um, so he is the one I try to get information from as far as holiday schedules and things like that so um, but he wouldn't be considered like our like he's not like account, a contract account, ton, oh, no. contact okay no all right, so and we still have not heard from anyone about that as far as their con that we've expressed concerns to them. Um, actually, I did, and I've got to call him tomorrow. So I just I got a voicemail from him this week. So I will be giving him a call tomorrow. But I don't know. So there's at least some what movement. one person can do, but <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> at least there's some acknowledgement. Okay, right there, gotcha. there is. It's a little late in the game, but that's okay. Yep. Um, and then redistricting update. Still waiting on the county. I'm expecting probably early next week that they'll finalize their maps, and then we can start doing ours and like I said before I don't anticipate much of a change in the town's um, district maps so well it looked like the county was acting on some of the redistricting this evening so at their okay. county town board county so board meeting it so. could be later this week or it could be tomorrow if the county clerk emails us so but when I looked at the maps it didn't look like district the town was changing at all with district 12 so now when it comes to county representation no I don't think I think we're all covered by yeah, the it same. looked like it was all good yeah. so. and it's irrelevant to to the town because we're, we we don't vote by district. We're right, you're at large, all, all so at it, large. Won't, it won't matter. The only thing that will, it will matter is the size of the wards. So if the size of the wards are outside of what the state recommends, then we may have to shift people from one ward to the other. Now, if that happens, we would want to try and shift them so that their uh, polling location is the same. Yeah. Um, it may be that somebody switches from seven to eight. It won't really make a difference as far as school district or voting location. It'll just be a number to them. So, and hopefully we don't have to make any changes. 
and Pewaukee Lake access closure that it starts the 20th and it comes back in December. The ramp that's, on Maple. Yep, that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have to add. That's it. <laughs> okay, uh, no unfinished business. New business 9A discussion and possible action on the Plan Commission's recommendation to approve a developer's agreement for John Spear. The developer, the retreat subdivision. Tim. All right, the retreat subdivision is located uh, east of Highway G off of Norms Road. They're under construction at this time. Uh, we allowed them to go under construction. They did provide a letter of credit. Uh, however, the, the uh, requirements are for the plan commission and the board to approve a developer's agreement. And that agreement set, sets forth all the parameters and all the requirements within uh, what the developer is required to do to uh, complete this, the, the development. And so it goes through public streets and grading and stormwater and, and all of that. Um, the plan commission did do a review of this and uh, there was a number of uh, grammatical uh, uh, notations that were addressed. In, in their comments, um, but they've been addressed already. Um, there was a, um, a particular concern about um, a note that was, uh, was on, let's see if I can get the page number here, just to be clear. Um, I'll get there. It had to do with deed restrictions on page 18 of your packet. Um, the word deed restriction starts in 17, but 18 it gives you a, a, a deed restriction that's required to put onto the lot. There was a concern at the time um, <coughs> about a particular grading, some grading that was, that was done on the uh, west side of the parcel. A lot of that water, right now it's, it, uh, there's a house on the 40 acre parcel and it all drains, or a lot, the westerly portion from the house drains basically to the west property line. There's a little opening uh, on the west property line and that water tends to go further west to a number of the properties that are lower and further to the west, uh, even up to Highway G. So that was a concern. Uh, the contractor, the developer was willing to put in a berm to direct the water to the north to a stormwater pond and that was already in. There was some concern about this language that's, that's in quotes here about uh, the owner of any lot shall not or will not, or, I'm sorry, shall or will at any time alter, I'm sorry, no owner of any lot sh shall or will alter at any time after the grade of any lot from that which is occurring on the lot at the time the site development improvements have been completed. And so it, it had the word natural in there and there's some concern about you know, can, can someone change that back to what it was? And, uh, and so um, the, Mr. Sphere says agreed to put, you know, what we did is we took out the word natural. He's agreed to put language in his, develop, in his deed restrictions so it's clear that no one can change their lot grade unless they get permission from the town. And that's, that's pretty common for, for anything that we do. But that particular concern has been addressed. The berm is, is done, it's in, it's, it's seated, it's, it's got matting on it, so it's working as it should right now. Uh, the only other thing of concern I would say that, that, just so you're aware of it, is that they are working out there and they are anticipating uh, that they will put in uh, roads this year. And by doing that, that means that they could potentially get uh, approval of the final plat, which will come in in October, and then they'll they'll be able to sell lots by the end of the year and get some construction started. Dave was talking about there might be a big push at the end of the year. We'll probably see a little bit of a push, maybe with probably. I mean, it's only really seven <coughs> lots, so there won't be a big push, but maybe one or two lots there. Uh, but we anticipate that the, the, they'll have the first layer of asphalt on by November 20th. They won't put the next layer on until uh, at least a year later. Um, or later if we extend it, depending on how the construction is going out there. The plan commission did a full review of this. Uh, the attorney has seen this, Dan and I have reviewed it as well, and all is in order. And the plan commission made a, I believe a 
unanimous recommendation to approve. Anything else that you can recall, Dan, on this? No, I think you covered it. Um, there were some minor changes, like Tim said, grammatically, and um, those were all gone through some hanging ghost items, but those have all been resolved. So I think we're good. Okay, any questions for Tim? Okay, any discussion? Motion to approve the developer agreement for uh, John Spears, developer of the retreat subdivision. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the development uh, agreement for the John Spears, the retreat subdivision in a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Spears, you have your, your agreement. Thank you, sir. Uh, discussion possible action on the plan commission's recommendation to approve a legal non-conforming conditional use permit to allow for sales service outside display of new and pre-owned motor vehicles and watercraft and a body shop for the Cassandra Castro and Thomas Budry um, Cassandra Motorsports LLC applicant KKNN Lindale LLC owner. Tim. All right, this was a subject of a public hearing that we held last Tuesday. Um, there was no, uh, no public comments on that from outside of the applicant. And uh, the Planning Commission did consider a number of uh, uh, changes to the conditional use. They have the final document as, as suggested is in your document. I'm gonna go through um, the, basically some of the conditions, not the standard conditions that are in every, every one, but just kind of the ones that, that are particular to this development. Uh, they start on your page um, 30. First condition is really deals with um, that the owner, it would be allowed to sell, uh, sell lease service and outside display of new or pre-owned vehicles, watercraft and a body shop. So that's the use. And that's without a planting screen or fence around the outside display. The M1 district requires any outside storage requires a fence or a landscaping screen to screen it. Um, this conditional use would, would not require that, that owner to do that. Um, uh, the applicant that you have is, is proposed to be the owner. Um, KKNN is proposing to sell this. So this document would not be signed until, until that to the, until the, the applicants are the actual owners on it, and, and it's written in that way. Uh, condition B defines what vehicles are, and uh, we say vehicles shall be defined as automobiles, and, and it's, there's a state statute reference for that, and uh, it it's basically talks about passenger vehicles, uh, not, not buses or motorcycles or mopeds or motor bicycles. That's what that that's what that definition talks about. Uh, but we cl clarified it a little bit more and just said also considered passenger cars, light passenger vans, and pickup trucks. So there's some definition as to what's going to be there for our vehicles. Watercraft is defined as personal watercraft as defined in section 30.50 of the state statutes. Basically, those are jet skis that are defined in that particular definition. Then we added pontoon boats and ski boats, and those were the, those were the that was the information we received from the applicant of what they would like to sell on the site. If there's a question about whether it's if if, uh, if the vehicle is allowed or not, or the watercraft is allowed or not, then that has to come to the planning commission for review. On that. Uh, letters C and D talk about the site plan and the landscaping plan as well as the uh, lighting plan. Um, those, those documents have not been fully submitted yet. I provided comments after that meeting back to the applicant. Um, so this conditional use allows them 30 days after closing to submit those plans for plan commission review um, for that. And our concern there is not, there's not a lot that's gonna change out there as far as the, the actual site plan where the cars are gonna be parked, the vehicle's gonna be parked. We just want a little bit more definition of how orderly they're gonna be and that maybe the numbers on that. 
Uh, the landscaping plan would deal with some additional trees there, some additional vegetation around the building. Uh, as far as the lighting goes, they, they did have an ana analysis of the lighting there. It's an existing lighting. I had some concerns about the intensity of some of the lighting there, and I, we haven't connected with the, the designer at this time. But the idea is at, at uh, 8 p.m., those lights would be reduced. So we don't have bright lights out there all night. And they have agreed to that, they have proposed that, um, and that's what's written in our document here. So the board on board fence that's there currently, that's gonna have to re be, uh, stay there. Uh, vehicles waiting for service or body shop work have to be behind that, that means to the north of that, so we, you're not visible from Highway 16. We want the owner to remove all excess debris, equipment, if you've been out there, they just there's things all over the place. Uh, the dumpster is not in the dumpster enclosure. Uh, some of that has to be cleaned up. We want that to be cleaned up. We're putting that onus on the owner uh, to get that done. We give them a time frame. Um, that's June, June 1st, 2022 to get rid of the debris. Uh, we want uh, the areas that are disturbed to be uh, restored by July 1st of 2022. And then the the issue or the work related to the dumpster has to be done by December 1st of this year. So we're gonna get that dumpster enclosed and out of, out of sight. Hours of operation, Monday through Friday, nine to six, Saturday, 10 to three, closed on Sunday, that's for sales. Um, hours of operation for service, seven to four, Monday through Friday. Um, the green space to the east. If you've been out there, there's a lot of vacant land to the east. We're saying can't be used for off-road vehicles. Uh, we don't want any testing or any, anybody testing any equipment out there. Um, we've just had issues in the past, and so we want to make it clear in this one. We know there's going to be some chemicals on site. They're listed there. Normal chemicals in the uh, sales and service operation. We allow for special events out there and the plan commission had some discussion on this as to how to handle special events so we ended up saying that uh, well dan will prepare a, a sample permit document that they would have to apply for and get that per special events permit and uh, we would put conditions on that permit i think initially what those conditions are notify the sheriff notify the fire department maybe hours of operation things like that for those special events and then we would be able to issue that uh, particular permit through the staff. Uh, condition N, no fuel storage above or below ground on the site. And then um, we have a number of other conditions. Uh, the balance of these are basically standard conditions that are in every conditional use. Um, I won't go through all those, but if you have questions, I can answer those. So that's where we're at. The plan commission did make a recommendation to approve this. I believe that was the unanimous re recommendation as well. Mm -hmm. And the applicant is here if you have questions directly for them or I can answer questions. Any questions for Tim? My, my only question is I know that uh, the site plan, the landscaping plan and the, and the lighting plan, it says here approval within 30 days of closing of the property. Is, are we gonna have problems, you know, getting that in time for a plan commission a meeting, I mean, or depending on when that closes, I just wanna make sure that there's enough time for something like that to happen. My intent there was to, uh, that the applicant has to provide the updated site plan within 30 days after closing. Okay. Okay, we can take it on whenever we, we can, we can address reviewing that at any time after that. Okay. I, I'm not I, I, trying to squeeze it all in 30 days and get it done right you away. Know, we should eliminate the words and approval. And we should just say uh, review review that that the plans and dimensions for the plan commission review within 30 days or well but so, i think i think an approval means that this document would be subject to the plan commission reviewing them is that how that's meant yeah to the operate? plan commission should review it and then eventually the plan they commission need to provide would need to, them yeah, but we don't have to approve it within 30 days okay that's my only concern it's a little confusing yeah that's why i was Yep. That's a good point. It's a very Maybe good point. there should be a comma after the word approval on that. Because really, we wanted to say the applicant shall provide an updated site plan, landscaping plan, you know, within 30 days of the date of property purchase closing. That's really what we want to say there. 
Does that make sense? Yep. My intent is to have them get those plans as soon as they close on the land, which maybe soon may may not be, but whenever it is, we that's that's when the clock starts ticking to get those plans in. So we're not waiting three months, six months for those plans. We want to get them in, get them reviewed. Well, they have to submit the plans, and we have to approve them before they can start oper operating. Correct? We're not. We're saying that they. We're saying that we. They don't have to do that. This this document does not say that you can't start operating at this time. We're saying that you can, you can operate prior to these items being reviewed and approved. Per my understanding of this, right, from the plan commission, there was essentially a, uh, a preliminary drawing of what was anticipated, right, which was said, okay, you know, this is a preliminary drawing, there may be some changes. Per this, this looks good. We're going to expect a finalized one, assuming there's no major changes to this finalized one. We will essentially give them the ability to, to close on the property, saying that, yes, you know, you hold to this, which you're proposing in your preliminary piece, you will have your conditional use permit available for you. So assuming there's Correct. no major changes, then we don't have to, it doesn't have to go back. We can say, okay, yep, it looks like your preliminary piece. They've got the ability and the, and the document ensuring the fact that if they close on the property, they can do what they want. Correct. So my understanding is of, of the condition of the closing is that there can't be any town, con, town, con, outstanding town conditions or you know that or contingencies I would say and this was one of the contingencies is get get the approval in place in order for them to close I believe that's the way well I, I was out of town I could not attend the planning commission okay. meeting but I'm a little uncomfortable with granting operating privileges well I mean worst case he operates and then he submits a plan and we don't like the plan what What's our power to, if he's already operating, what's our power to make him change the plan? They have submitted preliminary plans. I mean, I think that we could we could say well, we could stop the operation if we had to at that time. Eric agrees with that? Did Eric see this? I don't know. I, so I watched it or listened to it, <laughs> all two and a half hours of it. For my understanding of that meeting was essentially they were approving that preliminary plan, but there could be no changes done to that property, obviously, until they close on the property and they own the property, right? So, you know, the, like, I, this is saying, hey, this is what we're going to do, right? Uh, we can't do it until we close. We need your thumbs up saying that if we, if we do this and we close, we're going to get this done. That's not what this says. That was, that was per my, no, that's, that's, that's not what this says. And that's why I was, that's why I was questioning it. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, your recollection of what happened at the Planning Commission was basically w anything that's, that, you know, the, the new owners do to the property is obviously going to be hopefully better than what's there today. Um, and there were, you know, there's a preliminary site plan. There was a basic sketch of a, a landscaping plan. And Tim had the lighting plan that he was going to review. But the, they've been very responsive to Tim and getting Tim his stuff. Um, and the, the thought was we were comfortable enough approving the conditional use contingent on the rest of the stuff coming in and being satisfactory to, to staff within, you know, 30 to, you know, 40 days, you know, a after the closing of the property. Okay. And my question is what's our recourse if it's not acceptable to the staff? If they submit a plan, either landscaping, lighting, that's not acceptable to the staff, what's our legal recourse? We don't um, file the conditional use with Moxie County, and then they don't have an approved use until they submit. But they're operating, so we shut them down? From what I understood from the Planning Commission is that they gave staff the approval to um, approve the site plan, the lighting plan, and those, but they had to be submitted prior to them operating, but it had the ability I mean, for to who? Staff. 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 And then staff, based on our code and based on the conditional use, would approve those by staff, and then they can begin operating. Because we can't I file, agree with that. I just don't think that's what this says, C and D. I think, Dan, I, I did put in there that it had to go to plan commission. 
for review and approval all the plans okay and as opposed to staff just staff and I, I that was the intent of our discussion at the end but and and Ed and I I believe that that the intent was that you and I would review the, the plans as they come in make sure that they follow the code make sure that they are in line with the conditional use permit and then we can file okay with the register of deeds and I think that was the intention of the plan commission yeah I mean that was the that was the intention of the, the plan commission I mean obviously you know the you know once staff approves that it, it would come to the plan commission just as awareness and knowing and then they would give their final sign off on it but right you know pretty much you know in, in my time of being on the plan commission the stuff that comes from staff doesn't really get questioned very much or very hard so it's you know we, we put a lot of trust and a lot of onus in our, in our staff so what was insufficient about what the Planning Commission reviewed about with these documents? Well, they just weren't, you know, very official landscape plans are very, you know, official, you know, you know they're, and they're, they're, Tim had some questions and staff had some questions on the plans that, that, that were presented. So, I mean, really, the landscaping plan is the one that's really outstanding. Well, let's just say they weren't professionally done. The landscape plan was someone sketching some trees and some 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 bushes around the around the the buildings i'm looking for a landscape plan done by a professional that identifies the tree species the height the, the you know the types the, i mean there's so, so there's, there's nothing there's schedule. nothing concerning like, about what no, we've seen that they plan no, to do no, we just, just want more of an official document as yeah. a matter of course yeah. is that right yeah just as other Correct. folks who have come in there for their conditional use permits in the last couple of years have provided yeah. so we want to make sure that they're all held to the same standard so based off what i we only think it can get better as it becomes a more professional document there, there seems to be a low risk that something crazy is going to happen that we dislike is that correct that, that's that's my opinion yes okay. and they, once again they've been very responsive to my request for information and they're making the effort to try to get me I mean, for plan commission, they they actually were, got me plans late, late, late in the day, or you know, but they got plans to me for the meeting, and so I would anticipate that they will do that. And I, I mean, if if it's we we can always pull the conditional use at any time, and we have to have cause. We can't just pull a conditional use right. without cause. Right. And that cause is a violation of one of the con conditions. Well, if, if and, it's not acceptable, this is to not the, it, this. All he has to do, you could right now, as I read it, C and D, you could not. It's it's not a, a violation of cause. You couldn't you couldn't pull the conditional use if if we don't like the plans nice. in landscaping or lighting. Because well, well, that's the conditional I uses, he submits them to us. That's well, all. Review I, and approve. I see what you're saying. Yes. Right? I mean, I guess the. That's why I don't want to take out proof. What if we just made it 60 days? Because then we're confident that they can submit it and the plan commission can take it up. That's why I was asking if 30 days was enough. I mean, I think yeah. Yeah. I think 60 days is. Then review and approve makes sense because yes. the plan commission needs to review and approve and they have 60 days to do it. But I'm reading this as that those plans need to be submitted within 30 days so that it can go in front of the planning commission for review and approval. Is that what you mean? So, so my, my intent is I want them to get right on it. Right. Get us the plans within 30 days. Correct. What I'm hearing is that once we get the plans, a condition should be that they have to be re approved within maybe another, well, I see, the, well, I, we I just, don't want to use 30 days well, can because we, just we get these months and say, mixed up. But. Uh, submission to the plan commission for review within 30 days and approval within 60 days of the date of property purchase and closing I mean but I guess my concern potential concern here for uh, for these people is that if this is still outstanding and their closing date is what when are you closing 20 next week 20 seconds okay Right, so I, I can tell you the progress we made already if you would like to. Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, I have one question first. Has Eric reviewed this? If Eric hasn't reviewed this, I, I don't. I, I don't. That's a, for me, that's a major issue. No, Eric hasn't reviewed it. It was from does he get Tuesday. The, does so. he get the packets? Yes, he gets the packets. 
Anybody else concerned that Eric should review this? Well, I think any motion would be contingent on review yeah. of the town attorney. Right. Well, I, these guys are trying to close. I guess right. there's I nothing mean, the planning commission is concerned about. They've approved it. I, I guess I don't want to hinder a, a business transaction. I mean, you, you, I mean, is there an appetite for this guy to push off his clothes? Probably not, right? So if you push off this clothes, lose the deal, and now we have a piece of property that sits there and continues to look like garbage. Here's the other problem. Okay. Sir, you really need to come to the podium. I'm sorry. That's all right. In lieu of the problem is, uh, well, we're you sitting have on to five, I'm sorry, I'm yeah. Thomas J. Baudry. Thank well, you. We're, we're sitting on $5 million worth of inventory also. I can, <clears throat> I can tell you that I went ahead because there's been major concern of you guys of how this place has been kept. So <clears throat> I purchased all the guys' equipment. And <clears throat> thus far, I, in two days, I've got the approval for them to start working on the site. So I'm, the floors are all being polished. The parking lot's been emptied. All the front planters have been filled in. There's been probably about 15 bushes planted there already. So the parking lot's being sealed on Friday and striped. So it's the landscape plans and his questions on the lighting are going to be handled probably by Friday. And, and no major anticipated changes to what was sketched? No, what happened is we, since it was operating as a car lot, we came in and applied. We thought we were just going to have to get an occupancy permit. He said, no, you got to get a, we went through all this stuff. So 24th hour, I sketched, I own a tree farm. So landscaping's not an issue. I got 20,000 trees. So um, I just drew on some trees and bushes on, on the plot of survey. And everybody said, that looks good. But they said, we want a professional drawing. I said, sure. And then they said the staff can approve it and we can move on. They can approve the lighting because I had a professional do that, but he wanted to review it and talk to him about it. So that's where we're at. Yeah, I, I mean, I listened to the plan commission portion. I mean, it felt, it, it felt like per the plan commission piece, it was they were a, on board with what was being presented, just it hadn't been officially finalized. Right? I just wanted to show him something, and I got it to him at about 4.30 in the afternoon of the, of the meeting. Yep. Okay. Well, don't go, because I have another question on item L. <clears throat> Anticipated chemicals on the site include penetrating lubes, carb cleaners, brake cleaners, soaps. But it, that means they just include that. It, shouldn't it read anticipated chemicals on site are limited to penetrating lubes, carbs? Because include I, mean it's all inclusive. You can have any chemical on the site. Uh, well, only what's used in the industry that's safe. And the chemicals can change on a daily basis. So how do you put which ones exactly you can use? That are standard for the industry. Yeah. That, I mean, I, that's that'd fine. Be, that'd I mean, be we're better not, wording. The only thing yeah. we're going to be doing there is, is service work. We're going to be washing the cars we sell and then eventually we're going to open up a body shop but everything there the air makeup the filtering system for the paint booths everything is to state code and updated so i i don't know what else further i can protect yeah you know okay so you want to be opposed to anticipated chemicals on site are limited to those chemicals that are standard for the industry yes including and then list it, it, sure, I'd even yeah. say including but not limited to. Yeah. So I think I think you want to say anticipated chemicals on site, and you want to say then are limited to those standard. Those that are standard for the those for the industry. That are those, those standard for the industry, and then just I leave it as including. Including but not comma, limited including. to. Comma yeah. including. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You got that, Dan? Yep. Okay. Well, we're changing words. <laughs> uh, I'd just recommend we change that uh, pontoon and ski boats to pontoon and tow boats. Tow boats? Yeah. Um, What's the difference? Wait they, for it. Yeah, I don't know either. They, they, <laughs> market, they market the wake and surfboards as wake and surfboards, right? A ski boat is a ski boat. So, it's, it's, so your general like piece is a tow boat. 
that's the general industry terminology is tow boat. So um, like a sport and what's a watch McCoder or a uh, uh, Mastercraft, they're all right. I just don't want you, I just don't want somebody to come in and be like, You, you get a like, ski you, boat, right. I get it. Wait, no, I get yeah. it. So, call it a tow boat, and now you're covering the ski boats, surf boats, and wakeboards. I just never heard There's of a that. lot of people yeah. on the lake would rather really be tow or ski boat, that's right. <laughs> right? That's so. As a as I worked at a Mastercraft dealership, and you wanted this tow boat. Where, where, you, where, where is that, Joe? Uh, it's uh, uh, section B, B, third sentence or fourth sentence. Yep, all right on the end there. Yeah, yeah, you got that. Yeah, yeah. I got it. So you're selling Maseratis and Ferraris? Sure, uh, Lamborghinis. Oh, you yeah. okay? You going to Lamborghinis? And we also are selling like uh, muscle cars, like completely restored ones. You know that are from a hundred thousand to four hundred thousand. Sure. And when if we talk about the ski boats and stuff, it, we're only going to be selling selective ones. Like we have the brand new twenty-two model Mastercraft, the yeah. twenty-three XT or whatever it is. We have a pontoon boat that goes from eight foot six to 15 foot wide. It's just gonna be unique boats. It's not like we're gonna have our <laughs> yeah, I mean the, boats for sale. The, the, the current model, Nautiques and Mastercrafts and Malibus, I mean, the, with the wake and surf ver versions are going for 300 and a quarter plus, right on the top of the line and stuff. So, I mean, it's not, it's not a $20,000 boat that's sitting on the lot. With trailer. With the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> That's Magic, extra, matching though. rims. <laughs> That's 10,000 extra. Yeah. <laughs> All right, any other questions for the applicants or for Tim? So what is our conclusion on C and D then? What? I think we're changing 30 to 60. I'm still very nervous about it. I'm more nervous about landscaping than lighting because lighting at least has some uh, <laughs> definition. Uh, but I'm gonna. I guess we're gonna trust the guy to do what he says he's gonna do. I'm gonna. I try, he'll probably have it Friday. I already hired a landscape. He said he'd start on it Wednesday. I said, can I have something by Friday? Yeah. Tim and our, the engineer that drew up the light. I I checked the lights that were there. They're putting out 13,000 uh, watts. The lights I'm putting in are gonna be better light, and they only put out a thousand watts. And, and they're direct. You can control them from actually an app on your phone to set the. Okay. the dimness and everything on them because we don't want bright lights there all night but how they're going to operate is if someone would break in to the property or drive on the property the lights will by motion will go bright again sure but otherwise they'll be down light pollution has become a very sensitive topic in the town oh I yeah but i just nobody's going to buy a lamborghini from a junkyard no. so i mean i'm reasonably the building's Confident being that. painted, it's going to be landscaped, the lot's going right. to look brand new as of Friday. I, I exit there every day I don't, even, my house, I don't so. even own the place yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your point, Ron, is that we have a statute reference with standards, that if he doesn't meet those, we have a, a very good cause to pull the conditional use, right? Yeah. And that's why you're less concerned about light. Yes. Is that right? Okay. I, I promise in this meeting on tape that I'll exceed the limitations on the landscaping. He's right. I right. want the place to be beautiful. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> Even if you don't, she does. You <laughs> <laughs> had to bring that up. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I thought I said something earlier. I, I'm not finding at the moment uh, about no petroleum products being sold. Tim, do you know where that is? Yeah, it's. Um, I just saw fuel storage. Are you talking not the not ta talking about the fuel Gasoline. storage piece? Yeah, but petroleum it's products M. would be because uh, people I was are going to want. We're going to sell people oil. Well, I was concerned it was limiting to you yeah. and would would be something that we need to look at because you eventually will sell petroleum products. Yeah, and I don't intend on ever selling like gasoline or diesel. You know, there's no gasoline tanks allowed. Yeah, so I couldn't. Yeah. 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 So. Do, do you know where is it, Ron? I, no, I item N on page three says there shall be no fuel storage above ground or below ground at Control the site. F. So you can't pay I don't, any fuel. I don't We're very, to. That that's on well, that's not on sewers. So, so the water, people are on wells on that side of the Yeah, road. I got a well in the holding. Sales of petroleum yeah. products. So this was in site. okay, so this was in Tim's memo. This is in their plan of operation. Your, your plan of operation. It was the plan of operation. Basically. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I I guess I just I just want to note for the minutes that he has amended that plan of operation to say that he will sell some, you know, small oil product as a part of a body shop. And that, that is not in violation of what we were told. Or at least it takes out the piece about 
sound petroleum. Well, and that was the plan of operation that was submitted before this. I think, Tim, is that not something that we're still waiting on as a final plan we're of trying operation? Trying to get a final plan of operation based on the changes made by the plan commission. We'll have them rewrite that a little bit. And then we'll include your comments. Yeah. I just don't want you to be in violation of it when you sell I don't either. Little, little oil things or body shop type stuff. Well, we'll just oil change. If you're servicing them, you're going to yeah. do yeah, winterizations right. and stuff. It's just, yep. Yeah. I think that would fall into anticipated chemicals within standard. You know, standard use there's there's the no fuel industry. tank, so we're covered yeah. on it not being a gas yeah. station. So that yeah, was very important to me. Yeah. It's number 17 on this yeah. last page. Okay. Anything else? Have we made it clear that the Planning Commission is then going to review the submissions of well, that's what this all says. of the missing pieces? Yeah, I don't, how does that change then? That was, that was you guys were going to approve I that. Did it. I just did it. Yeah, because it, it, the way that I remember the planning commission going is they saw the plans they did. They, they liked them, but they wanted them to be professional, and they said I have to get them within 30 days to Tim and Dan. Is the way I I, I'm comfortable with changing planning commission to town staff. Yeah, that's what yeah. I remember it being. But I'm not in charge here. So if, if I, I'm comfortable with that as well, and then the language would change from in C dimensions for plan commission review, and if we just add the word staff approval, yeah. town staff, town yeah. staff, yeah, we have to do it there and in D. Yeah, then I then I think we're we're covered. We say who's going to approve it, and I think 30 days is reasonable. Then right? Yep. Oh, so we leave it at 30 for that. Okay. Then then we don't need to work around a planning commission schedule, so 30 right. makes That's sense. Fine. So any other changes? If not, let's review from yeah, I got that. <laughs> item, the fourth line in item B is changing from ski boats to tow boats. Item C on the third line is approval uh, for the plan commission, not or the town staff, not plan commission. On the second to last line in D, again, it's town staff in lieu of plan commission. The days stay at 30. And in line L, it changes to say anticipated chemicals on site are limited to those that are common, th those that are standard for the industry, including, and then the list of penetrating groups, carb cleaners, brake cleaners, and so forth. Dry mm. normal household chemicals. That's the extent of the changes. With that, I'd accept a motion to accept the uh, conditional use, the non-conforming conditional use, as amended. I'll, changes. I will motion to approve a legal non-conforming conditional use permit to allow for sales service outside display of new and pre-owned motor vehicles and body shop for Cassandra Castro and Thomas Beaudry. Beaudry, thank you. Cassandra Motorsports, LLC. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Your motion passes. Thank you. New Congratulations. Welcome to the Thank town you. of Delafield. Thanks for saving that site. <laughs> we gave you the opportunity to see that site. <laughs> I know you did it. <laughs> You're well. <laughs> all right, item C. Discussion and possible action on police citation administrative support services contract for 22 to tw uh, 2022 to 2024. Sure. So this is just our police citation um, support that we get for tickets and for um, their tracks program that the county uses. Um, th this is pretty standard what we do every year. Um, so this is just the updated contract that brings us through December 31st of 2024. Um, there, there's a charge to this, but we also get um, money on the other end through ticket revenue and, and things like that. So um, I would recommend approval uh, because town staff doesn't want to do it themselves. <laughs> lazier and lazier. <laughs> <laughs> any comments? Were there any changes to the last contract we had? 1% per year increase. Oh, wow. Okay. What was it previously? Um, 
I don't know because I think that one was agreed to before I started, but it's okay. 3143 is, um, well, it's in the contract for the per, per hour services, but. <clears throat> Motion to approve the Police Citation Administrative Support Service contract for 2022-2024. I'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of the Police Citation Administrative Support Services contract for 2022 to 2024. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Discussion and possible action on trick-or-treat hours. It's that time again. Got it. Right. Mm -hmm. Wayne, do you remember, is this, the city doing four to seven or five to eight? I asked the other day and I completely forgot. I think they run five to seven on Christmas. It's like a Sunday. Why don't we... It's we could Sunday, do four to right? eight. Start at four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can yeah. Do the real key is it's October 31st. So we're not going to relive the. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's Sunday. It's so. Sunday, so yeah. that works out well. Yeah, we had four to eight. We, four to eight. We, I mean, that's just my opinion. I don't. Yeah. I don't I mean, even have kids in the game. So all yeah. day. Seven a.m. to eight. <laughs> Why not? Uh, no. Um, I mean, the, the the kids' eyes are usually done pretty close to. Shortly after sunset, right? When so, is, I mean, when is like, sunset in yeah. October? It's usually around 7, I think. So yeah. Sunset to sundown? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think so. Mom yeah. decides anyhow. So. I mean, the 4 to 8 is gonna, it's, that's certainly going to cover enough of those hours that the little kids will be out and have plenty of time and yeah. in the middle will be there too. So, mm -hmm. Motion to set the official Tom Adele Field trick or treat hours for Sunday, October 31st from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Announcements and planning items. Budget workshop, uh, Tuesday, September 28th at 5 p.m. Town board to immediately follow the budget workshop. And plan commission is October 5th at 6.30. Any general comments or? If not, I'll take I move to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. And a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, guys.